In this movie, we'll look at a couple ways to format and customize the tab's graphic. Now, we want to begin by removing the default outline from our shape, that little stroke that goes around the shape. Well, we do that by going up to the Format tab and selecting Shape Outline, No Outline. Goodbye. Another thing we can do is change the color of the tab graphic. So we do that also by going up to Format, Shape Fill, and there's the blue, right? So that was originally the, the default blue, and then we changed it to a different blue when we created our custom colors. But I'm going to go for something a little bit uh, off-white, and I'll just do that by selecting one of my custom colors here. Now, with the white background uh, and the off-white tab, things are a little bit hard to see. So I'm going to quickly increase the contrast between my tab graphic and my slide background by right-clicking my slide, choosing Format Background, and we'll go ahead and just apply a different solid fill. So I'll grab my blue, and I could, if I wanted to, I could apply this color to all of my slides, but I don't want to. Move that over. I just want to apply it to the current slide. So don't just click close and close out of that box. Now that our tab is visible again, let's add an accent color to the top of the tab. Now that's just that little splash of color that we'll add to the tab that just gives the element, just, just adds a splash of color to our tab that gives us an element that we can modify for each of the button states. So we do that by going up to the insert menu and we'll select shape and we'll choose a rounded rectangle. Go ahead and just draw a small sliver on the slide. And if I move this over my tab, you'll see that it has that default blue fill. I'm going to go ahead really quick and remove that outline. So format, shape outline, no outline. Now, depending on the size of your tab, you may need to zoom in a bit to get a better view. Now, a great shortcut for zooming in to select the object you're working on and see it closer is to select it, hold, your and press and hold your control key and scroll your mouse wheel forward and that'll actually not only zoom in on your object but it actually keeps the object centered so that makes it really easy to uh, get up and close to the object you're working on and i'm just going to move this up a little bit stretch it and probably just make it a little bit skinnier and i'm going to drag this handle the yellow diamond all the way over to give it a uh, completely round end now finally, let's go ahead and just add some placeholder text to our label, just something so we can see uh, how the label will look when we're actually working with it. A couple options for this. One option is to uh, just press Control T on your keyboard and start typing. The other option would be to uh, insert a text box from your insert menu and then text box. But uh, if you work with those short keys, shortcut keys, it just makes it that much easier. Going to move this up into position and let's go ahead and change the size so home and i'll just bring this down to 10. and one thing i'll do to make sure that my text is always centered is i'm going to align it by the center but then i'm also going to uh, stretch this out to the width of my rectangle and i'll probably want to move this up just a little bit and so what i did was i could have stretched it all the way to the size of the rectangle. But then, depending on the size of the text and how, how many letters you're using, it could look a little off. Since this really, this area right here, is sort of the extra part of our um, tab. So what I want to probably do is just move this one over. And I'm just going to stretch the text box to fit that part of it. OK, so now it's centered. Now it's positioned. We may have to modify it a little bit later but essentially it's in position now. Now, real quick, the kind of the standard or default way, I'm just gonna turn this text off real quick. I'm just going to disable it. Another way that we could have added our text to the shape, and it's worth mentioning because you see this a lot, and that is to select your shape and just begin typing on the shape. And then when you click away from it, the text is already part of the shape. And of course you can, you know, you can change the color. Now, the only reason I wouldn't do this in this type of example is that we're actually creating something a little bit more custom. We're actually really working with uh, the alignment and placement of each of our, of our objects. And because of that, I want to control the text a little bit better. When you place it inside the object, you really don't have as much control because it's either going to put it in the center to a little to the right. You can justify it to the, the, to the left or the right, above or below. Not a lot of options. So 
take that out, and I'll bring back my text box right here. This just gives me a lot more options, a lot more uh, freedom for uh, getting that pixel perfect alignment with my text and my shape. So uh, two options, always uh, both are valid, just sometimes there's a reason you may want to uh, separate the text from the actual object. Now finally, let's just give our tab a little bit of depth by adding a drop shadow to it. Storyline shape effects are, again, similar to PowerPoint's tools, so this should be really familiar. Select your tab graphic and go up to Format, Shape Effects, and then Shadow. Now, you can choose the type of shadow you're looking for or uh, customize it. I really find that the offset center in most cases works just fine. So go ahead and just select that. Now, maybe you want to reduce the amount of shadow. You can certainly customize the shadow as much as you like. So back under Shape Effects, you have Shadow. And then if you go all the way down, Shadow Options, and we can do things like uh, increase or decrease the transparency maybe around 80. I always put it up maybe just a little bit higher than the default, just to soften it. Again, you can change how, how far the blur goes, right? So that's much farther, much narrower. So, subtle the better, more subtle the better most times. So, again, just leave it like that for this uh, tutorial. You're welcome to come back at any point and customize it. So that's really all we're gonna do to customize our tabs. In the next chapter, we'll go ahead and convert the tabs into buttons using Storyline's built-in states.